recording, and we are recording. We are starting oh, recording. Recording. We're recording. I'm we can, I'm John Hastings. Here's the other thing with posting, posting on TikTok because we're talking about Mildred Burke and her life is so fucking sad. I don't want to talk about it right away. The other thing with all of those apps is that I one thing that I've noticed about social media, Dylan, is Ooh. before the apps used to open quietly, now all the apps open way loud. You you hit on t- hit TikTok yes. with your thumb. Instagram, yes. it used to be a nice, quick, silent check. Could be checking my email. Could be reading yes. a periodical. No, now you know I'm just checking out dance video. Like, it's just... Doo, 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 doo. And you're like, ah! Well, this is the uh, this is the thing about um, the... Oh, we, fuck, we talked about... Whatever, let's, let's date this one. If someone's listening to this in a year because they want to know a bit about Mildred Burke, they're going to be fucked. Anyway... That's the thing about the new NXT where they're like, why does it look like that? It's because that's how all, like, everything online and everything is now where it's not like – this. The I don't know what era it was where sleekness was good. Like, ooh, everything's sleek. Now it's literally, like, fucking fluorescent colors. It's like the 80s, like the 80s. What it, what it is is everything is – Pay attention to me, motherfucker. Hey, yeah, oh, everything is like – my stand-up video? Here's nine emojis. One of them's just a banana moving. Oh, I – okay, so I've now taken over the rest of you TikTok for the, all the cum over. monkey listening because Dylan <sighs> created a family and got what he calls Can I tell too you busy to deal with Can these fucks. Go ahead, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on my phone – and then John just walked into my house in with no shirt and a jean vest on. That is goes, true. I do. You know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. And I said. And then, and then, by the way, then I. Over, yeah, I then I got, a, left. I got a bunch of ruffles from the the cabinet before I left, though. I yeah. took those. And then I yeah. and then I was like, why is the gambler here? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then he left my house too. I yeah. Uh, what? He was in that. He was <laughs> the guy. He was one of the people wrestling. Like, uh, I think I think you'll I think no I think you'll find it was Steve Daw. Mm-hmm. I was it the gambler. I know one of them was Steve Daw because because yeah. Larry Zabisco in the middle of Scott Hall's big thing just goes like says like alludes like maybe Steve Daw can take care of this and you're just like Larry stop it you're embarrassing everyone La- Steve <laughs> Daw takes care of nothing. I duck so I like Larry but he clearly made that joke for himself. Also NXT 2.0 is cool because now that I think of it. They have the the last poker player character in the APA, but like the guy who's like whole gimmick is that he likes poker was the gambler, and now apparently they have NXT 2.0 has a guy whose character is just that like he loves poker. I mean, I'm works, not surprised, but he dresses like a poker dealer because like a poker player I... doesn't have a set thing like. I guess poker player, it's like, oh, how do you show that? You have to have a sign around your neck. Yeah, says, no, it's if it was a poker player. Divorced, no, if it was like... a poker player, it's just, and coming to the ring. The woman he left three years ago because he impregnated a 17-year-old in Reno. Her name is Katarina, and she is upset that he's not at home watching their goddamn kids for once. <laughs> I guess a good poker player would be. Let me ask you this, Dylan. You are the, uh, you are a father. You are a father and a husband. Do you just ever think about like it's a weird thing of like the guys that just walk out one day? Like you're like that is so cowardly. But at another point, it's like that is fucking wild that you're like no one's gonna oh, one notice. Day you're like I've had I'm it. out. I know one guy. I was this on is tour evolution with a guy. And I am Bautista. Yeah, like exactly. You're like this is evolution, and I am. Surprise, Randy Orton, shit and bag, leave. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a, I was on I'm tour with this you guys. this old comedian. Uh, he's the same comedian, by the way, that when they did a tour of Singapore and they got taken to because Singapore is really weird, where the best pad thai is inside of a uh, five story um, bordello, and uh, the comedy club because comedy is so weird, they get a deal where you get a a free sex wor- first free prosy sex worker free. Apparently the only comic yeah. that was like, well, you better let them know I'll be getting more. And they were like, what? And he was like, I'll see you in a bit. I like that. I also just said, did I say his first name or his whole name right there? You said right the-, the complete name. Did I say the complete name? Edit that out, my friend. That is four minutes. And in the four, four minutes. And also, can you remember to edit this one out there, Dylan, as opposed to the last time where you had to be alerted by people watching the episode? John just told you, uh, said, edit I'm this out. And I guarantee nothing. So you got to watch your language here or I'll just, I'll just fucking go. So anyway, I'm also, t- I'm also got to be on- totally honest. I'm totally fine. If that guy's name is out there, he will not care. Cause 
here's the next story is he was talking about we were looking at a beautiful lake in Geneva or somewhere. And I went, that's beautiful. He goes, I don't like bodies of water. Reminds me when I was a father, I take my kids swimming. And all I think about is just swimming far enough out. They can't find me and then I'd be free. That's something that a human being said to me unsolicited. How many kids, though? How many kids? I asked someone else. Two kids from two different women. Was never around yeah, them yeah, at the yeah. same time. So that's bad. <laughs> Did you say that's bad? You're like, that's why. Two kids, two different women. I'm assuming you have multiple kids. Then you're like, obviously, you want to show the same amount of affection to both of them. But then you have two separate families. It's hard times. Anyway. I don't you like you're who, on this uh, man's side. You know who? You know who I had real hard know. times? Yeah. Mildred Burke. Ladies and gentlemen, get Allow me to sum up uh, Mildred Burke's uh, life. It's the end of Million Dollar Baby, but no one lets her die. She's just <laughs> she's just in pain. <laughs> Hello, Millie. What are you? I'm a woman, and it's the 1910s. Be prepared for hate. What? Yeah, Why? Can we have a special Patreon episode? I want to do two things. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Two sepul- special Patreon episodes. First episode, saddest lives in professional wrestling. Oh. Second episode, most evil people in professional wrestling. And... I mean, we're saying people. I don't know why you say men. Uh, yeah, but fucking the only woman who gives boy, any Billy of them, Wolf. Billy, Billy Wolf. Wolf, is top five, and he didn't kill anybody, which is fascinating. Yeah, well, she he destroyed so many. He, he destroyed the amount a lot of, of lives. The amount of different ways he crippled Mildred Burke without laying a finger on her is wild. Basically, so here's the story. No, he Mildred Burke. Uh, uh, psychologically tortured that woman. He psychologically tortured her, and also, like, mm-hmm. he was doing cash and couch stuff in the 40s and 50s when it was like, like, now, you know, they have no... Well, I guess they had one record of Weinstein, right? Did they have one record of Weinstein? Like, actual... Yeah, because that lady went undercover. Yeah, it was more than one. Record. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, so Weinstein... But then there's a lot of allegations about other but people. But there's, there's also... Gwen, like, Gwyneth Peltrow very famously was told by Harvey Weinstein, if you fuck me, you'll get these movies. Him forgetting that her boyfriend was Brad Pitt, who apparently was like, hey, fuck you. I'm not in any of your fucking movies, and I'm Brad Pitt. You see this fucking face? You see this dick? He showed Harvey Weinstein his dick, and I he was like, you. I fuck her. You don't fuck her, bitch. And everyone was like, the Golden Globes are fun. And then that, but that's like, you're right. There, the casting couch has always existed, but the wrestling casting couch is not a couch. It's a bunch of bales of hay, it's and bad. he smells. No, Billy Wolf. We're talking about a man named Billy Wolf, who was the female wrestling promoter for the NWA. And let me tell you, I enjoyed the Mildred Bark. Uh, research packet for no other reason than it was one of the few times we hear about that generation of promoters before the ones who were part of the 70s uh, and then who were destroyed by Vince McMahon. So like Leroy McGurk was one of Mildred Burke's only somewhat friends. Bear in mind, Leroy McGurk is the blind man who still insisted on driving. So um, she, at the very end of her career, was completely hobbled because Billy Wolf was the man who controlled um, lady professional wrestling. He had been forced out, but the NWA was like, well, we could clearly put in charge the only woman who was the face of wrestling for the last 20 years. But then Sam Muchnick was like, no, I don't trust a woman. I don't trust a woman to do that job. There is math and writing down. What if her period blood attracts bears? Gentlemen, we are only able to afford reasonable conferences, conference rooms in reasonable cities. We cannot withstand a lawsuit from the city of Chicago for bringing bears because that woman is bleeding from the place she pees. She <laughs> must be killed! And they're like, we cannot argue with Sam much, Nick. He is speaking only science. Now, now does... There's a bunch. Of, there's some science on this subject, but would you say women legally can't lead because then they'll just try and you know start cooking because that's their natural habitat? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I um, there's I have, there's some great, um, man. I almost want to put these on the wrestler some wrestler review social media, but my friend sent me these sexist coffee ads from Folgers, and you know how Folgers now a coffee commercial is like someone you're like, oh. Takes drink of coffee. I don't know why I'm doing that when I have a real like coffee it. here. I like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> would you like me <laughs> to do the act out, Dylan, with my actual coffee? Here's, coffee okay, go ahead. Here's how a coffee ad works. Like, uh, yeah. What's this coffee, John? I don't know, Dylan. What is it? Folgers. 
No. Was it made by a woman who's hurt? Tastes like that. Mm. They, if you back a woman into a corner, she makes a good cup of joe. So mm, that's yeah. now how all uh, of Dylan, them Dylan, work. Dylan. Let's have a cup of our, let's have a sip of this. Mm. Consent destroys boners. <laughs> Folgers <laughs> coffee. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it would probably be better if that was it. Because here's what it is. It's like uh, it's it's a guy. Um, the the first one is a guy uh, at a barbecue, and then his wife goes, "Here's your coffee." And then he says, it better be better than last time because you serve <laughs> bad coffee and it ruins my good meat. And then Folgers coffee. That's not an actual ad. Is that the actual ad? Oh, yeah. And then there's <laughs> another one where it's like, uh, here's your coffee, honey. And he's sitting at the t- uh, table with the paper. And he's like, better be better than the last cup you made. That was awful. Cold, <laughs> Folgers coffee. So it's not like. I've Folgers said it before and I'll good, say it again. Do you understand? Bad. <laughs> okay, there's, there's two things you need need to all understand about America that really. They've been told that there was a time in their country that if you were a boy, this was your day. You woke up mm-hmm. wherever you wanted. You ate a fully, <laughs> a fully prepared <laughs> breakfast by a woman who has to fuck you. And she is already showered. Already in, like, she oh, is. yeah. Full makeup. Full, she sleeps full in makeup. makeup. Yeah, she sleeps in makeup with curlers on, so her hair is already perfect in the morning. There's no time. Your children speak to you only in respectful hushed tones you can do yeah. what what happened the then you just certificate has the pubic hair formation you like on it and you sign yeah, off on it exactly the one she has for the rest yeah. of her life yeah lightning bolt and triangle i like it even, busy <laughs> down there even into, <laughs> even into senility yeah, well yeah into senility i like to see how the lightning bolt is not done as well as it used to be <laughs> so yeah mildred burke um she you know she was born and uh, she was basically she, she was born in a fire, and the fire got bigger as her life went yeah. on. Just a uh, born in 1915, marries early on, has a kid, essentially meets Billy Wolf. Um, and, and Billy Wolf him is as a conduit to get into wrestling and out of her life as a diner waitress. When yes, you know sometimes, um, I mean, depending on how you look at it, her life did work out for her because she was the michael jordan the wayne gretzky of um women's wrestling where she really also took something that wasn't there she is like legitimately also feeling- little did she, little did she know she makes jim Cornette look like a whiny fucking bitch because jim Cornette. oh i never saw no fucking man wrestling no woman it's like mildred burke the first and most important woman's wrestler made her entire career wrestling off of men it's a well, carnival sideshow like- Shut the fuck up. Oh, by the yeah. way, I started listening to Jim Cornette Experience this week because I was wanting a wrestling hit. Can I just say, I um, hate when podcasts get successful because this is their always why, solution. Oh, time to make it unnecessary. Let, oh, our podcast is successful because we talked in depth about old wrestling and that's what people who listen to re- wrestling podcasts want. Here's what we better do. Make all the ads half an hour. Every episode has 11 ads. Every show starts with... Dude, 90 minutes of unnecessary host chat. Put it, type in Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette in you YouTube. So exactly. This is the thing. Hey, but, is I don't, this is I don't my... research this on what Jim Cornette thinks about Billy Wolf, but I'm sure that he's like, oh, you mean the guy who organized women's wrestling in the 40s and 50s and talks completely calmly in a different voice? And as soon as he talks about Kenny Olivier, he never trapped a woman in a dumpster. He doesn't earn wrestling. You know. It's just, but what it is, is it's so clearly as if you, because I've listened, I listen, I've been doing a lot of driving and errands and in LA, Ooh. LA is so good. If you're like, would you like to listen to uh, six long ass podcasts slowly over the course of a few days? Yes. Well, welcome to the perfect city for that. And listening to that podcast is exactly that is you can tell like he's a wrestling historian. He very much values this as one of the true American art forms and one of the most original odd things given to the world. An argument could be made that it actually predates postmodernism. But also, it was just a really weird thing where men in polyester went to bother women and also shit on each other. Like, it's such a weird thing to exist. And he knows that intrinsically. But he also knows, I need to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. How do I do that? Well, then I, just, I call everyone pudding boy and make weird comments about their body. Like, it's just such a erratic, weird thing I to listen know, to. Man. And what it is is... All- po- what does he call them? Pie face and balding? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Pie I'm not saying I don't enjoy that. Not I mean, uh, uh, 
pie face and ball. Like that. He called. Be- I mean, he did refer to Kenny Olivier at one time as a uh, pud boy with the mutton chops. Where I was just like, pud boy. <laughs> I do like. I mean, you could honestly call uh, us pie face and balding, and you could trade off. It's both. It's to- both people. It's both. Is it? Pie, pie, does it mean both? Of, does it mean both of them at the same time? It does. <laughs> pie face and balding would be our children. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. But what I'm talking about is Mildred Bur- learning about Mildred Burke is you're like, oh, wrestling has always been like this. It has always been the sideshow. There, like, no, like the Attitude Era. If anything was more true to wrestling than uh, than the Hulk Hogan Golden Age or the 70s and 80s NWA, because wrestling, what it was really about was. Who are these people that need help? Instead of helping them, let's hurt them. Well, I think the Attitude Era was actually um, better morally than the Golden Age Hulk Hogan uh, era. I know. I actually, I somewhat have to agree with you because it's like all most of the most of the really questionable stuff was on screen, as opposed to like the Golden Age of Hulk Hogan. Even the Mildred Burke is like, she's a fine athlete and a good champion, and then she just walks off behind the curtain. There's Billy Wolf. You didn't fill your bucket with your piss for me to drink. Yeah. Please stop drinking my piss. Well, how am I supposed to shit my piss on one of your kids? <laughs> Billy, it's weird you're into this. Wh- so, wh- first of all, who shits their piss on someone's kids? I do. The wolf man does. Howl for the wolf. I'm so sorry. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Duran song was about. This guy. It was, it was, yeah. Yeah. He's hungry like a douche. <laughs> yeah, he's hungry like a piece of shit. So, um, no, what I was saying is because... Attitude Era is like, hey, don't watch this. It's not for kids. Whereas Hulk Hogan Era was like, please watch this. It is for children. Also, here are the messages. America, sick. Every Everywhere else, bad. Just like the xenophobic messages where it's like, I have a Middle Eastern kid in school. I wonder if I should respect him. Turns out he's like the Iron Sheik. Evil. So anyway. um, Oh, here's how he gets. she gets into wrestling. She has a trial match against Gypsy Joe, who I want to believe is the same Gypsy Joe that New Jack hit in the head with a bat. We don't know if that is for sure, but what is for sure is she beats Gypsy Joe, and Billy Wolf trains her how to wrestle. Trains her how to wrestle in the old school carny way, which is men show up. I'm strong. I can out wrestle this woman. Turns out they cannot. She wins a bunch of money. Yeah, it's very weird. Her and it, this is how the story gets so sad so quickly because her mom at some so point sad. has to so, sell her diner yes. to support support her daughter, even though her daughter's oh. biggest fear in life was to just end up working at that diner. Like it's so brutal and weird and sad. Yeah, don't join entertainment; it hurts your family. Yeah, don't join entertainment. Your mom ends up giving two hundred dollars to a man named Billy Wolf, who for her definitely made her see what he calls his onion bag. Do you want to see my onion bag? <laughs> Billy Wolf, by the way, as far as like a like Billy Wolf, go, he's just fucking, the... he's fucking. I I don't. What do we know? He's what Mount, Billy? He's did Mount you fucking Rushmore? Of fucking... Did you look up what Billy Wolf looks like? Yes. So Billy Wolf looks like you. Um, no. <laughs> no. He, he, like... he has a strong jaw and a bad face, but he like. I mean, of course, it's, it's Mildred Burke. Obviously, they get married because it's a marriage of convenience. And yeah. as soon as she wants to leave at one point because Billy Wolf uh, stomps a mud hole in her kid, what ha- yeah. uh, her young child. Because well, what happens is, her. yeah, he's cheating on her. And the noises of him cheating on, mm-hmm. uh, of this man cheating on this child's mother, either, depending on the account, awoke the child or upset the child. Well, either way, why are you fucking close enough to a child that the child's like, is that my stepdad hey, cheating on my John, mom? John, <laughs> go ahead. Life hack. Don't fuck near a child. Life hack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, is everyone sitting down? I'm going to give you a second before, so you can all sit down. We here at the Wrestler Review think it's not the best idea to fuck near children. That's all we're saying. I don't. The world I'll is divided those... enough. Dylan, the world's those divided enough. Generation videos. Where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A guy yeah. in a suit with one of those Britney Spears mics, and it's like, <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned during business, don't have sex. Near a kid. Um, so I am very obsessed with Anthony Robbins, particularly how Tony no one Robbins. sees. 
Tony Robbins sees how weird he is. Is this about when he, when my friend, our, our mutual friend Bobby Mayer, alluded me to this video? Is this the video where the lady is like, "I was sexually assaulted," and Anthony and Tony Robbins goes, "Get over it," because <laughs> he's because he's like, "Well, he's the secret, right?" So it's like you always think positive things. Yeah. So it's oh, like, by oh, the way, assaulted. Well, then you that's the worst thing that can happen. So it can only go if up you, from here. Why I don't listen you to join a- yoga. I listened to a podcast about the terrible, terrible psychological damage of the idea of exposing a kid to, it's all about positivity. You which, just have to get through. Is literally, uh, it started on Behind the Bastards, mm-hmm. and then it moved over to the Religious Right ca- uh, cast, because that, and by the way, that podcast is one of the most drying, annoying things ever, but in terms of pure information, it's so fascinating. And it like was playing like... Toast, toast sandwich. Exactly. It's like, would you... You know what this podcast could use? A dynamic speaker or an entertaining uh, writer. What do we have? Two academics who are trying to hurt you with that. boredom. I love academics. Oh, it's very... I, I, I'll tell you, I once in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, went uh, brought my longboard on tour. Just longboarded oh. around a parking lot for two hours listening to a podcast about the religious right. And it um, made me feel pretty great. That's good. Hey, cool! I got a longboard. I got a shortboard. You know what that's called? Shoes. I got a longboard because I have PTSD from a bike accident. I'm trying to overcome it, Dylan. PTSD stands for penis, pussy, tits, suck, suck dick. dick. <laughs> I also D also was dick. I just had a different route of getting there. <laughs> penis did suck dick. Anyway, Mil- or so Mildred Burke. What what other? Mine was this is fun put part some time. Burke. Yeah. On my dick. That's what my That's PTSD good. put some time on my dick. This is the fun part about Mildred Burke is we don't have any record of, like, the feud she had. So, like, this is a person who obviously, like a lot of people, had a very artistically successful life in a, in a tire fire of a personal life. But since there was no televised wrestling really back then, you only have the tire fire of her personal life. Yeah. It's documented. So, you know what? I think a lot of the shit I've heard about Mildred Burke we, is focused only on her Billy Wolf um Obviously, because Billy Wolf, I mean, you can summarize the guy as like, whatever, if someone, not if someone, but like a lot of times when when someone creates something that's very progressive and good, like, you know, women's wrestling or like, why don't we have women's wrestling um, during the war effort and stuff? Because, you know, a lot of a lot of things like this pop up. We see women's baseball pop up during um, World War Two and get very popular. And then mm-hmm. carry on to war, uh, even after obviously the war ends, and a lot of people who do these progressive things um, are what do you call? It? I don't know how to say it other than like you know, pieces of shit because they're just taking advantage of a population of people that feel like they have no options in a lot of ways, much yeah. like women um, hmm. in that era specifically. Uh, and anyway, Mildred Burke. Not having the best time, but I mean, very successful at wrestling immediately because she's doing that carny trick of bet on, you know, bet on uh, you could beat up this woman, which is crazy to me that there would be a bunch of men being like, I could beat up that woman. Hey, because to me, it's like you're at a you're at a carnival and you got your, you know, can- your candy corn with your uh, family. And then they're like, oh, what do you want to do, daddy? Hey, do you want to go on the Ferris wheel? No, I'm pretty sure I could beat up that chick. I want to win 20 bucks. Which is how John got here. It's exactly right. I am uh, sorry for being distracted. I was just I uh, was just reading fabulous moolah discussing Billy Wolf. When I went to go look at a photo of him, I got that article to come up, and she just just yeah. described him as an extreme chauvinist. And you're just like, whoa, yo, yo, yo. Um, and well, only and only moolah was like, I don't like you, and I will not work for you, but I will use your tactics. That's the thing that's very interesting is that she goes, he only turned to managing uh, uh, women after his techniques didn't work on men. And and the reason why I was so stunned and bring this up is that means somewhere Billy Wolf tried to use his techniques on male wrestlers. Hey, we're married. I'm going to go fuck your friend. It's like, what? I'm not I'm not a gay guy. I'm a I'm a straight man and that friend is that friend's a tree. And he's like, I'm Billy Wolf, time to howl of the wolf, baby. Well apparently, um well so first of all I misspoke because she uh, Mildred Burke was successful way before, before World War Two, obviously. Yeah, she um, was successful throughout the entire run. It was basically World War Two and then the post World War II sort of return to American normalcy. 
is where she ended. The other thing you have to remember is she was very much a carny. Like a lot of the stories of basically every story of Billy Wolf fucking someone behind Mildred Burke's back um, is because Mildred Burke was somewhere else in the carnival selling tickets. Like you have to understand it's a very different wrestling world. We have bridges from that world to this because wrestling's weird and people weirdly don't die. Like Harley Race, Fabulous Mula, Roddy Piper were all part of this type of wrestling, which is literally you are an attraction at the carnival that goes around and it's overseen by this weird cabal of shitty smokers called the NWA who control wrestling wherever it is in those certain territories. The NWA isn't formed yet by the 30s, is it? It is. I thought it was. The NWA is, I no, think, the NWA formed... is like after like late 40s, early 50s. But the NWA is really annoying because there's actually two. Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, it's founded in 48, but there's yeah, another... She's a good 10 years ahead of the NWA. But the thing that's annoying is there's the NWA Association and then there's the N the Asus and then there's the NWA Alliance. And the association is before the alliance, because that's the belt they're using. That's why they went NWA. But the NWA Alliance, all of those title holders moving forward were picked by the ruling body, which was the alliance, not the association. Um, and basically Sam Muchnick had control the whole time because he controlled who Dylan Luthes. Sam Muchnick was just bull Billy Wolf, but instead of like physically intimidating them, I assume they were just like, Lou, do math. Yeah, it was Sam Muchnick, it's Luthes going, could I beat that up? And it's like, sure, Lou. And he's like, I'm the best, right? Sure you are, Lou. Could one of you send a telegram to Daddy and let him know I'm not what he wants? I beat someone <laughs> up. Can you let Daddy know? Lou wants to let Daddy know. That's what I really hope from all the old-timey wrestlers is that's why they had such like an iron... That's why they had to create kayfabe is all of the wrestlers were just crying all the time about their daddies being mean to them. <laughs> Pretty much. Vern, Vern, you're in no state to go out there. I just want to tell my daddy I'm better than him. Get Greg in here. Get Greg in here to let him know that I'm I'm a good daddy. Get Greg to tell me I'm a good daddy. That's what that I was want. was a lot I of want. late AWA was Greg versus Vern in a Am I a Good Daddy match. Yeah. Come and kiss your daddy, Greg. Come and kiss your daddy. No, daddy. Also, no, yeah. there's something so embarrassing about it, a full adult calling their parents daddy or mommy. But it's and that's that's the that's the baseline title. It's fine if you do that occasionally, but the baseline title should be Mum Dad or Mama Dada, Mama Papa. I've seen that one weirdly. It's what? very America loves a mama and a papa. It's really weird. Depending on accent, I can see that. Southern accent, mama or papa's fine. But it just saying but thing, that in a in a dead you know, southern Canada. Northern, so the problem so the problem we have now is you have people that parents mama. are very southern. Southern, but their kids are live in California are having kids. So they, in their head, what a child calls a mom is mama, but they're just in SoCal. So it's just come to mama, come to papa. Mama. Yeah. Mama. Mama, I'm 14. Give me the keys to the car. <laughs> so 37, Hildred Burke wins. Does that mean that yes. by, in the next 10 years, we're going to get step mama porn? <laughs> That mama? I don't know. I'm always intrigued about what the next por weird porn that'll make me uncomfortable is because phone fucking. It's gonna be phone. Oh, very good point. Yeah, the craziest porn got when Dylan and I started jacking off is sometimes they'd fuck in a van. <laughs> no, but that was because it was like get in the van. We're gonna pay you, and then hey, of course, but still, fuck off. It, but like, still, just the idea that it's like that. That was like you want to know what's edgy porn. We're showing you how mean we are to these performers, and we're doing it in a van. And everyone in my generation was like, we have found yes. the edge. Yes. 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 This is the Stone Cold Steve Austin of pornography. Edgy. Or the, my favorite, or they would just oil them up and be like, you, you're your body's good and they'd be like, yes there was yes, a there was it a is good and they'd be like yes this is good <laughs> but yeah <laughs> very good yeah and now it's just like it's just a woman's ass and you're like what and it's just like just the ass just the noises no now you're going to page three before you see anything that's not like step cousin 
we're searching for a relative that you're comfortable masturbating to. <laughs> I I'm gonna reveal this because I'm so bothered Ooh, by all the sibling video. pornography. Um, on you know on porn sites like on video sites, uh, you can like be like, I want to see less of this. I want to see less of this. I was like, I wonder if porn allows you to do that. Turns out, absolutely does. Boom, 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 boom. The only thing is you gotta not do it on private window settings so it remembers your cookies and just remember to clear that browser history for the last hour. Unless you're having a treat day, then just delete the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, oftentimes I've been like, am I just going to make an account so that they show me more of the thing? Do you but know how, really how is... here's why, is I've, I literally have gone, I should just make an account. This will just be easier. I know the videos I'm going to look for. But here's why is I know I'm going to die one day. And I just don't need whoever it is who's shutting down the old email to be like, I knew he was someone who had a Pornhub account. Like, I just, I know that they'll, they, I, th I know they think I already do, and I'm not giving them the satisfaction of doing it. I think it. it'd be good if they, if you died suddenly and then everyone, someone had to control your email for a couple of weeks to kind of tell everyone, but still was like. I mean, I have told you about what happened. For, like, this guy liked your comment on Pornhub. You. You know what happened when one uh, I had a family member pass away in 2021 mm -hmm. and their partner had never really used email before. So decided to send them everyone who reached out when that person died a thank you email mm -hmm. from the only email that they knew about, which was that dead person's email. And let me tell you what turns you against the bereaved faster than anything, which is the day after a very complicated to deal with surprise death, getting an email from that person's email account subject matter. I bet you weren't expecting this so soon. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you will throw your phone. Even if you don't believe in ghosts, in that moment, you're like, fuck ghosts for fucking using email. Fuck you, ghosts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ghosts just, just sending you spam would be dope. Also, what you shouldn't do is then say that out loud on a uh, – that, that, tell that whole story when you're on your Twitch stream because a bunch of people in the chat then make – Email account such as dead uncle at uh, <laughs> gmail.com, member of your family who's dead, or my personal favorite, dead guy 67. Only 66 other people on Gmail made dead guy at gmail.com. He, he was original, uh, able to get the original dead uncle. Someone got, someone's got like the dead uncle at gmail.com. Like, I was like, that's crazy. Like, there was a, it's crazy like, those are still out there. It's so weird that you like, and also uncle. Like, I assume, by the way, dirty uncle. That you're in the thousands, <laughs> in the millions for dirty uncle. Yeah, and Dylan's got Super about ten thousand of them. He just oh, in case. I wish I, and I sell them off. I sell them <laughs> off also, can I just point this out? Does anyone else remember the social media hub clubhouse? This is how fast no our society moves. our society moves. That was a full social media platform that three different comedians told me you got to get on and it's going to revolutionize the business. Already doesn't exist, ladies and gentlemen. I don't go know fuck what yourselves. It is. You don't know what it is? No. It was it's uh it was Twitch, but just for talking. Okay. Well, I mean, Twitch is Twitch for talking. Yeah, it's you just go on and you audio. It's an audio streaming site only. Ugh. Yeah, it sucked. It was ham radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's ham radio, but spelled like John Ham in that. Ooh. Yeah, you're about to see a big guy. It's cup. got a drinking problem? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can't cope with fame and then leaves its partner of many years. So, what I'm going to do is fucking talk about this fucking woman, all right, John? Whoa. Okay. Yeah, but we probably should do it after the break because we've already like, talked John for 30 like, minutes. Uh, hey, I want to talk about Mildred Burke's title run. And John was like, here's the porn I like. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. That is what we did. Okay, so, all right, we've been talking Dylan's about doing Mildred Burke Dylan's doing an impression of himself. Dylan's doing an impression of himself. That's it. That's now. a depression of Dylan. And, Ladies and uh, gentlemen, we'll I'd see like you to, after the break. After I'd the like break. To pause this information about this. Uh, Why is Dylan still doing an impression of himself? And just tell you how you can. Stop getting stepdaughter st stuff and start getting real daughter stuff on your porn feed. My, again, I don't know why Dylan's doing an impression of himself, but uh, we'll talk I to you. How do get real daughter on here and That's get Dylan again. Out of there. What's weird is Dylan is doing an impression of himself and his mom. D guys, we'll see you after the break. Let's take out our dicks and kiss the tips. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of Mildred Burke. Mildred Burke's wrestling career goes the following. She's, her mom has to give a, a horrible sex criminal some money. She marries him. 
hardship, 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 kid, 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 hardship, hardship, hardship. Now you're now I I I hate you. Leave," said Billy Wolf. And then she's like, "No, I don't think so." And then the NWA is like, "We'd be on your side because you're more popular, but you have a." No penis, so get away. Yeah, and wrestling's also, if you think about it, it's 1937, and wrestling as a rule is always 10 to 20 years behind. So Yeah, and in this case, intentionally. Like, they're like, we are <laughs> not. I mean, um, here's some stuff about, here's some stuff, though. All right, so she's the champion in 1937. She sold more tickets than Jack Dempsey in a venue in 1937. Basically, the gimmick is, this woman who's five she's five foot two she goes about 135 pounds she had some lower leg injuries that caused her to stop wrestling um Mm -hmm. so she got a huge upper body after that upper body her knee got better again so she this is so crazy how did her knee get better dylan she was training her replacement and it popped back into place uh other injuries she had was both thumbs were routinely bent back to the wrist um, a variety of elbow and shoulder dislocations and chronic knee um, issues that plagued her for the rest of her career. Uh, she also said awesome things like women need to remember that they can throw their husbands around, but they're too busy drinking and smoking, which is one of the most like w- imagine that that is who what I want from a female MMA fighter. Now just grab the ring from Joe Rogan. Attention women. Me too is in our hands. Rip a dick. Fuck you, Rogan. Like I would love so much. Of it's just like, Joe, now you will know what Co- uh, Connor suffered. And just like a woman named Virginia breaks Joe's uh, leg in the ring. That's for Connor. Don't interview us when we're hurt. <laughs> well, this is pretty much it, though. Like, it's, um, he, she's Ronda Rousey before Ronda Rousey. This is the only way you can. She created something out of nothing. Now, I'm sure there were women, female wrestlers who had some success before Mildred Burke, but she almost creates an industry. Um, the difference being that when Ronda Rousey did that, there was an organization there to take advantage and monetize everything, which there yeah. wasn't with Mildred Burke. Because no. the NWA didn't want to get really into women's wrestling. And the other thing is, 30s, well, still I in think the what era it is of is. shooters. Like, you're still in the era of shooters who, like, wrestling is, it, it's less of like, you're just getting, like, uh, what was that guy's name? There's that Irish guy who was the first dude who was like, this guy has no grappling background, and we're going to make him the champion. And women's wrestling led to a lot of intergender matches, intergender tag matches. It really popularized tag team wrestling because it's like... Dude, it was essentially fucking... um, It was essentially DDT Pro was wrestling at this point. Like, DDT Pro was the most legacy organization that wrestling's ever created because it's like, yeah, this woman fights 12 men they found in a bar... Uh, and then a bear fights a firefighter. Welcome to pro wrestling. How much does yeah. this cost? One nickel. All the grain alcohol I can drink? Get on in there, sunshine. Yeah, exactly. And they're still doing, like you said, Mildred Burke is a carny. She's still doing matches that are just like, hey, she's going to face down. So I spoke earlier. She said, I said she drew more than Jack Dempsey. She, what she did was she drew the largest crowd to a sporting event in, in 1937 to, in Jacksonville. That didn't involve Jack Dempsey, so she's like. Oh, interesting. She's a, um, she's a star. She makes fifty thousand dollars in nineteen thirty-eight, and like you said, like Billy Wolf is cheating on her. Like nineteen, hold up, it is because she's <laughs> by her own estimate driven over a hundred thousand miles and wore out two cars in the same year of nineteen forty-nine. That's so crazy. It's also, I don't know why, but when I read that, I was like, how do you wear out a car in 1949? Yeah, that's when they were fucking like, this is just a bunch of steel. Well, I guarantee what happened. She just like, she was probably drunk driving a lot. Good for her. (laughs) I got to tell you, I really hope that that's true. I really hope that it's just like, wait a minute. How'd you, uh, how'd you wreck the second car this year? Oh, it was drinking and I just, I didn't. I wanted to wash it, but I didn't want to go to a car wash, so I just drove the fucking I I drink a lot. Yeah, Pro pretty time. much. I mean, I'm sure that was like the driving test in the 30s and 40s. Was like, oh, okay, you can drive sober. Do you think they had a driving test in? The, I don't even think they had a driving test back then. I think it was just sort of like, hey, can you drive? And it's like, 
I'm gonna drive these cattle to market. That's good enough for me. Get in the fucking go. <laughs> We're all honest here. A good handshake says yes, you can. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Fuck you. Very yeah. good point. Get on in there. All right. So through the 40s, she's going from state to state, essentially, because she's such a big draw getting women's wrestling legalized. Um, she headlines the show with Ed Strangler Lewis, who hated women's wrestling. But that's the thing. Everyone hates it and doesn't agree with it and thinks, why did women even have to wrestle? So no one's on the prowl for Billy Wolf, who... Good story about Billy Wolf. He said, I got two questions for you to a new performer. He said, are you oh my God. and will you have sex with me? Sex with me. And then she said, no, I won't. And uh, I am not a no, no. And then he was like, better well, part, better be part. Champion then. Better part was, uh, no, I'm not. But I love this. And she goes, but I clarified it was none of his business. And I'm like, oh, God. And then will you never be the champion? Ew, Billy. Also, you know what I don't like about Billy Wolf? What? Really looks like me. Really looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird when you're like if you if they make someone, if like, they make the ugly and he was a piece of shit and then you're like well he just looks like me all right yeah I'm like oh fuck like it's just like oh man like and i thought glasses actually butched up my face um <laughs> yeah basically if Mil they make a movie of mildred burke it's my role to lose as billy wolf god damn it <laughs> And it's really good because they'll be like, wow, you're really good at that role, John. You and know, you're like, I didn't even think I was ad yeah. uh, auditioning. I just always walk into a room and throw the cold slot at the wall and just go, that's not a dinner dish. <laughs> <laughs> that's for lunch. Sides are for whores. I want two mains. <laughs> uh, sides are for whores. Well, then call me a slut because I love that macaroni salad. <laughs> Here's one of the craziest things in the world. So another thing about Billy Wolf was uh, Mildred got injured in a match and he was pissed off because she couldn't help uh, salve his uh, nuts because he had this big crabs outbreak from um, from cheating on her. And then somehow <laughs> after that story in 1951, they were able to adopt a child who was a wrestler and then she died in the ring at 18. <laughs> This is what I assume. This is so fucking sad. And like everyone, and, and it says in the notes. So Christopher Hobson, I assume, read eight books in a week to research this. But it's like, like everyone blamed Billy Wolf, except Billy Wolf. So no one blamed Billy Wolf. <laughs> like it was just like, like, and it was like, and her injuries were so ghastly. It's like a a prolapsed collapse of the stomach and a smashing and dusting of all the ribs by a gun. Like it's just like, yeah. She died of being beaten to death slowly over years. And you're like, oh, my God. Fun stuff. And then this is also important. Like, think about how hard it is to get women's wrestling legalized from state to state. Like, still states are holding out for having women's wrestling legalized. And then you have a death like this. It's kind of like if there was a death in the early UFC. Like, if there, if there was a death in the UFC in 1996, there would be no UFC. Yeah. Like, it is, thank God they just didn't have money to hire one sketchy doctor at the UFC. Or <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. Conor McGregor's working at the train station in Dublin, and he's just a very aggressive baggage. I still think Conor McGregor would be successful just because there is no end. No, but what? At what? Like, that's the thing. He'd be if a he's great not. White Hope boxer. He'd be a guy they just push as a boxer because he's great at talking, and he'd lose all the time. You know what I like about the phrase Great White Hope is that you're like, there's no way that that's actually racist. They just, and it's like, no, no, it was literally, there was a black guy who was the champion and they were like, we need a white guy. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Cooney, Larry Holmes. Good for them. Uh, that was before that. It was the, there was a different big black champion in like there's the 20s. There's just boring. What happens is you oh have like God. a big, uh, a big like intelligent, soft-spoken man is the champion, and they're like, "We need someone who's like fucking insane." This this guy's crazy, and then the intelligent guy just slowly beats him up. It's like Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson, where I was like, "No, Mike Tyson's just gonna like be a bro at him," and it's like, "No, one of these guys yeah. is good still, and the other guy is just like, uh, I'm fighting because I have to." Good yeah, time. Lennox like Lennox Lewis is not going to be concerned that Mike Tyson has a weed brand. Lennox Lewis will just be like, I haven't had a complex carbohydrate since 1992. I don't really seem like I like to talk or be around anyone. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I will weirdly introduce Russell Peters to stage, which I did a lot in the 2000s, and John Hastings is the only one who remembers that, and then slowly pick apart Mike Tyson's defenses. <laughs> like Lennox oh, Lewis, by the way, and I can't believe we're talking about boxing, but I will bring this back to Mildred Burke, watch me do it, which is um, when it comes to actually very dynamic, important performers in something like wrestling or something like boxing, they very rarely get their due because the really interesting things and important things they do are quite boring. Mildred Burke does not get, is only now getting the credit she deserves because wrestling went so out of its way to hide or ignore the con contributions of someone like Mildred Burke. But without her, we don't have women's wrestling. It's also her dynamic, interesting style. The idea that she was a big bruising woman who beat up men is incredibly important to wrestling now because it shows that it's something that was part of the fabric that led to the promotion of this sport. And it has always been ridiculous. So when you have people like Jim Cornette creating whole podcasting industries out of being like, they're not fucking doing the fact that and it's like, you are willfully ignoring all of the truths that you know, as a wrestling historian, Jim, just because you want to make money off of not liking AEW. And I'm totally fine for you making money, but just be honest, just be like Mildred Burke did it fucking better. Cause when she beat up those men, she was doing it. Cause she was picturing her fucking husband. And as a cook, I like to know that Mildred Burke invented <laughs> in ring wrestling cucking. It's called Burnerkin. My wife does it to me all the time in the hot tub. I got her and FTR in there. I had to pay them $1,500 each. And all they did was just talk to her about knowing Tully Blanchard. And I came so hard, I was literally <laughs> treated for alcohol poisoning. Oh, they just talked about what Tully orders at road stops. Mm. I've not nutted so, I've nutted so fucking hard it filled my cowboy boots. <laughs> I wasn't even wearing them, Dylan. They were in the other room. So when she splits from Billy Wolf, um, Mae Young's got some pretty good takes here. Here's one of Mae Young's takes. I mean, by the way, and I thought this when I was reading the research, when you're heading to Mae Young for a hot take, you're in trouble. You're like, we need we need a reasonable perspective on this. Who has in-depth information? Um, the, um, that woman over there who just, just lit a cigarette off of a baby's head. Eh, 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 Mildred Burke, Mildred Burke, her pussy sounds like sauerkraut, Mildred Burke, and Mae Young, Mae Young doesn't have dementia, this is just her personality. Well, this is the thing, is you, this is classic, where young person goes to a person who actually was in that era, and they view as like a victim, but the person from that era just says something offside <laughs> which is here's what so basically billy uh billy wolf had this entire stable of female wrestlers he had sex with every single one of them um i mean sex is probably a bad word yeah like it, it wasn't sex it was sex fucking... sex sex implies both people went fine yeah he <laughs> weinstein all of them and yeah. uh so he so but may young basically was the only holdout and may young said it was stupid of the women to fuck an old fart to get bookings they would have got anyway. And then I'm assuming that journalism student burnt their book and said, well, now I can't even print the fucking article. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's Wait like, a can you just say, like, yeah, it was bad and he was bad? And it's like, actually, no, I blame my coworkers. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> hello, May Young here. I just want to let you know, if you get murdered, that's your fault. Because when I see a knife, I run. And you're like, what? <laughs> Hey, World War II was bad, but you got to admit it. That Hitler was a looker. Okay, we can't use yeah. your thing. Oh, like. sure, the Holocaust is tragic. But when they bring a van and say, get in, I always run. That's why I've never been on time from arriving from the <laughs> yeah, airport. That's, that's from the, the shuttles. I, that's the other thing, too, where it's like one of those people in those situations where obviously they do something amazing to, like, overcome adversity. But then they kind of are like, yeah, I am a fucking badass. Like, they're not... <laughs> Yeah, 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 fucking, yeah. You couldn't fuck. You couldn't beat me up right now. Well, you're 90 and refined to a bed. Yeah, and I'd fucking mind kick the shit out of you, bro. But yeah, it, can we but, rattle but, but, off some of the fun, uh, the fu the the weird fucking crimes Billy Wolf did? Here's what uh, he killed Mildred Burke's dog. What the fuck? Yeah, it's so weird. It's so he, weird. Why did you spread do that? a rumor that she had cancer to prevent her from being booked? By the way, this is like they then had this massive divorce falling out and Mildred yeah. Burke basically was just like, you go your way, I'll go my way and we'll just both earn money in this nice industry. And Billy Wolf goes, 
No, I am now about to. I basically Billy Wolf invented trolling before there was 4chan. Like he was just like, I killed your dog, and you have cancer, which is bad. Be, having cancer makes you weak. Like it's. What was the other thing he did? Oh, it's in the fucking research. Never mind. Oh no, there's oh. tons of stuff. He would have sex. He would cheat on her and be like, "Yo, she's All the time. better at sex than you." Um. Oh, yeah, and then th this is... So what would you do? This guy's done all these fucking crazy-ass things. Uh, John, what's the weirdest ultimate payback? What makes this story insane? The fact that there's not a movie on this woman is crazy, and I'm sure there will be. Like, who would I say? Like, it's going to sound weird now, but I guarantee in five, ten years, Olivia Rodrigo's going to put on some muscle and win an Oscar playing Mildred Burke because... The end of this story is insane. Here's how she gets back at uh, Billy Wolf. She has an eight-year-long affair with his fucking son. Son. Yeah. Uh, by the way. She fucking uh, porn hubs his son. Yeah, she, she fucking, fucking. This is what John really likes. That's true. I don't true. want actors pretending. Absolutely I want people not. fucking fucking their stepsons. Real I, shit. What Big I also dogs like. Dogs eat first. John yeah, yeah. Oh. You can catch John uh, at the John Hastings on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, or at Pornhub at Step Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Step on my throat with your stepson. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My personal favorite thing is that Billy Wolf would always remark on the people that he cheated on Mildred with had bigger boobs, and that's mm -hmm. why he did it. Uh, and then she came, became convinced at this time period where he was, ha she was, ha he was having an affair with Nell Stewart, her frequent op opponent. Yes. Um, that Bully Wolf kept trying to drown both of them, which I was like, what? Why would she just tell people? Like, what? Yeah, she was convinced he was trying to drown both Nell and Mildred, which I was always like, what? Why? Like, I don't know. He's just, he's a fucking asshole. Uh, yeah, she had an eight year long affair with his son. Um, uh, when they uh, finally were divorced, um, no, they got married, and then Billy discovered it all, and Billy's punishment was he made George drive his mistress, Nell Stewart, to the matches, which is so weird. Uh, he yeah. also then uh, uh, beat up his entire roster while they were touring in Mexico, and Mae Young felt that that was a premeditated move because you can't get arrested for beating women in Mexico at the time, which I was like... That's fucking crazy. Uh, May, I don't think that it was premeditated. I think he would have just done it in the States, too, because I don't know of anyone in the 40s getting arrested for hitting a woman. Like, that just didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. You could just yell, I fought in the war at the cops, and they'd be like... Yeah, and they'd be Good like, point. we weren't even coming to arrest you. We were coming to give you our billy clubs. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, um, they'd be like... Uh, finally, in 1952, everything came finally. to a head. Um because Mildred Burke and Billy Wolf finally separated. Can I say, by the way, one of the more happy marriages in wrestling? Um, she obtained really? a... Did you know this? Billy we have Wolf two was minutes actually, to wrap up this episode. Go ahead. Uh, this is Billy Wolf's official name was the Macho Man Billy Wolf. Keep yes, going. exactly. Uh, and then basically Burke won a giant campaign to be recognized by the NWA for all of her, the things she had done to build them an aspect of their business. And also to create performers for that business and an audience for their business in general. And they were like, women bad, man good. She sought um, help from her um, one of her only friends in the NWA, Leroy McGurk. Only person Jesus I've ever read anything positive about Leroy McGurk. Leroy McGurk, again, blind man who insisted on driving. Do you know what that says about that man's personality? Do You're you know going to kill people. That's she, inconvenient for them. With her, though. He was such good friends with her because she would just... Go and talk like this. Hello, I'm I'm Milfred Burke, and he's yeah. like, "Hey, Milfred, anything that sounds right? Um, that sounds about like what a man sounds like." Um, and uh, yeah, and then um, Mil and then Milfred Milfred Mildred Burke. God damn, Mildred Burke tries to become the Booker of women's wrestling for the NWA. Because the NWA turned down. Yeah, application turned down because she was a woman. Oh, that was their actual reason. Uh, and then uh, I know he's the, abusive, but you are once again, and I cannot stress this enough, a woman. So yeah, no. I understand that he is a ritualistic abuser, and he's created a psychopathic environment for the female wrestlers. But I need to make this clear: you piss sitting down, that is disgusting. Get out of here. Yeah, that's the crazy thing where it's like they have, they don't like Billy Wolf. 
Yeah, but they the still would rather they, have yeah. Billy Wolf than this woman who's like made them so much money. Yeah. Hello, my name is Sam Munchnik. The following things are equal in my mind. Um, uh, systematic torture and rape is the same as being a woman. Both of you were bad. Get the fuck out of my office. Like, do you like? Again, what I love about wrestling is all of this information is public, but they are still quickly trying to make sure no one, no one acknowledges Jim Hurd did anything positive. Like, do you understand that? Like, <laughs> like Billy Wolf, he was a bit of a bad guy. Jim Hurd, the Satan of wrestling. Like, do you under like what was yeah. Jim Hurd's biggest sin? He was he didn't really understand his job. Billy Wolf was a monster, and they're still like, yeah, but his last name was cool. I help. I sorry. I uh, I help. I anticipate that some people are asked about Billy Wolf, and they're like, "Oh yeah, he uh, promoted women's wrestling, and he got tra tag wrestling off the ground." And uh, yeah, I mean, he had some a controversial past. That's also the other thing when oh, I mean, oh yeah with with Chris Brown a lot in Chris Brown. So it's like, yeah, controversial past. That's code for uh oh, uh, doctor. Like, <laughs> let me let me say this about being non-specific about no shit. No one has. Means we want I to have make to end off these people. Again. We have to end. We have to end up this best thing about. No, Mildred no, no. Burke. We're gonna. No, we're gonna have to do more because there's too much here. E Dylan. Okay, so Mildred Burke. The end of Mildred Burke's life. Um, let's all wel welcome everyone to Dazed and Confused. If it was directed by David Lynch, go ahead, Dylan. Tell me more. She splits from Billy Wolf. Let's That's where we get the eight-year affair with his son. Mm -hmm. And the great part about it is that um, obviously Billy Wolf decides, you know what my son's weaknesses are? Alcohol. That he'll make him give up on the relationship with my ex-wife. She tries to work with the NWA, but obviously, like, it really seems like everyone's, like, split from Billy Wolf. This whole, and this is where Olivia Rodrigo wins the Oscar, baby, because things do not fucking work out for uh, Mildred Burke whatsoever. Essentially, also, by this time, Born in 1915, she's a 38-year-old woman by this time in 1953 when she's like, can I please book the women? They say no. Obviously, um, there's a bias for y against older women in wrestling. Did you know that, John? You know what? It's interesting because it was only a bias at that time. They have very much... Oh, sorry, I had eight strokes. Everything is the same. This is when they came up with the rule, and when they were done writing it down, they went... Never change it. And everyone went, why would you even tell us not to? We weren't going to anyway. And then they all full fucked. Like, they were like, let's <laughs> do it. But the other thing about uh, Mildred Burke is she finally gets her independence from Billy Wolf. And her only power is being, like, the star of women's wrestling. Yeah. And she clearly should lose the title because it's professional wrestling. She should go out on her back. But she just basically refused to because she was also a better shoot shoot shooter than all these women she is you know what and by the way when paul Heyman said so you want to shoot big boy mm -hmm. and made this gesture he got that from mildred burke mildred burke invented finger guns <laughs> she invented finger guns she it's a basically it's thought that she was the first person to actually have entrance music yes this it, is the crazy yeah. this is one of the things i learned that i had in my final notes that i didn't think we were going to get to because we had to cut the episode short but we're doing bonus um Boner. is of course she's not only is not only is wrestling so fucked because they could like the amount of people who claim they invented finishing or um, entrance music, you're like all of you can't be right. Someone else thought of this, and of course it was like Mildred Burke did, and then yeah. it, like no one give her gives her the right. Or Here's respect. the lineage of professional wrestling. Gorgeous George is the guy who gets all the credit, who's like thought to be the one who's like who everyone's like, oh, actually I know a lot about wrestling. So Gorgeous George made that up, but it's actually Mildred Burke and, and Gorgeous George was like, hey, I'm just going to act like a girl and people will be pissed. And he was right. <laughs> That's, That's all I did. Right. He was like, I'm going to act like a fucking chick. And he's like, hey, I clean the house. And people were like, get the fucking guy off our TV. You don't, that's a woman cleans the goddamn house. And yeah. she makes coffee and you fucking hate it. Why, sir, sir, your hair has been sculpted. Are you in some sort of trouble? I will help you. <laughs> what the hell's on your shirt? Sir, uh, nothing. sir. It's just plain. Sir. No stains? What are you, a bitch? <laughs> yeah. Why can't I not see what you had for lunch on your shirt? Yeah. A man wears a white shirt, and he changes it only when he's eating mustard. Yeah, exactly. What's there no mustard you on your shirt? wear a white shirt, and then you get food on it, and then people know you have money for food. Yeah. That's how you dress if you're a man. Are you better than me? George, what does the word gorgeous mean? Does that mean better than me? Does that mean better than me? 
So why do you have all your, why can I not see through your teeth? Why do some of you, why are all your teeth in your head? Are you a giant baby? Someone arrest the giant baby that's a girl. Someone arrest the giant baby that's a girl. That's what they would chant. Also, a <laughs> pen exploded while the recording of this episode. So, For the Patreon that. Go ahead. Mildred Burke, and then she um, died happy? Yeah. Oh, she she died, well, she died old. That's good. Yeah, she died old, which is pretty nuts. Um, and um, she died old, and she died doing what all great, important pioneers in wrestling did, which is... Running her own she, school. She died running her own school, trying to relive former glories, and I mm-hmm. assume taking advantage of those poor students. She died doing what she loved, saying, well, you'll have to give me this money if you think you're going to make it in the biz. And then the woman <laughs> was like, what? And then she just fucking cried. Hey, she, I mean, she trained, um, she trained uh, Rhonda Singh, uh, who later went on to be Bertha Faye, who was a very, very successful wrestler. And, she um, also was one of the very. She was the like she was like led a tour of a uh, wrestling tour of Japan immediately post war. Like she was, her like last chapter was actually a very sort of not the nicest clo- like conclusion, but like she fucking she did some shit. You know what I mean? Like she, it's one of those things where like she did not have the ability to be more recognized in the industry that she helped create because of societal factors around her. But yeah, she gave us Birth of Fay, which you know, was pretty good. And Billy Corgan of the NWA has uh, recreated the belt that she wore as women's champion in the 40s and 50s mm-hmm. and have named it uh, the Burke and have called the Women's NWA Championship the Burke. And it's uh, in memory of Mildred Burke. Which is good. But which is good. Really, her legacy should have happened in the 60s. Gets into wrestling. It, go ahead, Dylan. Lay it gets out into for wrestling. Me. Yeah, right? that's true. Abuse and success. Like it, like like they went hand in hand. Towards the end of her prominence, basically when when her drawing power starts to wane, um, she is divorced from the man who's the abuser. That's true. She what should have, if this is a fucking so if this is a movie, so if this is a movie that does really good at the box office, then she goes to the NWA. They let her book women's wrestling, and she has her own territory and. Basically, from 1956 onwards, you have glow, but women own it, and yeah. it's a really powerful thing. That's interesting. But since um, Olivia Rodrigo's winning this fucking boom. Oscar, goddamn right she is. She goes to the NWA. The NWA says, "Hey, what's that thing between your legs?" And she says, "Nothing." And they go, "Exactly. Get the fuck out of my face." Yeah. And it should be her. She has to basically go around, and how it appears to be is like she goes around just being like. Two different countries being like, I'm Mildred Burke. I was a, I was one of the biggest stars in the world. Do you want to have women's wrestling here? And they go, sure. So she becomes like, um, what do you call it? A missionary for women's wrestling for the rest of her life, which is good. It's good. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, being the booker of the NWA. And that's the funny thing. The consolidation of power at the NWA is something that everyone loves where it's like, yeah, they it all it was all this wild west shit and then it became under one roof and that's no. when wrestling really took off again in the 50s. But really it was like oh the NWA came under one roof and they decided fuck women's wrestling. It's stupid. Or if it is there is women's wrestling that they can have their own title but they're in the middle of the show because you know, we can't have a fucking woman headlining, which they totally could have done. They well it was so funny is yeah, they could have done it's in the same way but it's also it's repeated it's even repeating right now in mo- in the terms of the value of just promoting women's wrestling as regular wrestling is never attained by any wrestling company because they don't just understand of go do the product you do for men for women. You've doubled your roster. You've doubled the amount of exciting things that are happening. Your fan base doesn't and has never cared. Just do it. But for some reason they won't. AEW, it's very funny, is one of, is the WWE, it's really fucked because they're just basically like they have such They've, a good roster. It reminds me of how AEW and WWE such a good rock- were in 19 or sorry, 2019 where it's like, yeah, you got some yeah. talent in AEW, but clearly WWE is the best roster, but as like I guarantee as it's like who knows? Maybe AEW they look at the fucking books and they're like, you're losing this much money. Uh, oh, we don't care for this. Yeah, I would rather be dead and I hate you. What? What? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That WrestleNomics show really interestingly 
um, that we mentioned on the Patreon feed, they did an estimate for how much money AEW made versus how much dummy, uh, MLW made versus like the Google search history. So AEW has like of all professional wrestling searches, I think I forget how much, but it was like in the thirtieth percentile. AEW has for Google searches, yeah. and the rest is WWE. A quarter of a percent MLW has, and they've apparently made like eighty-five million dollars just because. Court Bauer, their owner, is just a weird guy who's like, we're the biggest wrestling show in Thailand. Legally, if you don't watch our show, you get whipped at your house. Also, fun fact about Court Bauer, he he is currently suing. Suing the WWE for um, uh, antitrust. Oh, I got to listen to this. Well, I know what I'm doing after this, and that is jacking off to Dylan's jizz noises. So, yeah, Mildred Burke, um, you know what? She did. I'll say this. Hobson sold this to us as like, going to be the worst show we've ever done because it's so sad. Still somehow not as sad as Luna Vachon because you know what not Mildred Burke did. Somehow rose above hate, much like John Cena. Mildred Burke, the or original John Ronda Hastings. Rousey, the original, original John, John Hastings, Hastings, the original John Cena, rose original above John. hate. And after uh, the horrors a, of her being also... in professional wrestling, lived what I'm going to assume is a happy life. I'm not going to. I'm not going to research further. Happy life. Yeah, I don't want to know. I also, the, another way that she's similar to John Cena, both of them learned Cantonese so they can apologize properly for acknowledging the nation of Taiwan. Mildred Burke and yes. John Cena are the only two people from wrestling to ever Wouldn't do that. Wouldn't that be hilarious if, because Mildred Burke was I used as, a, as, a, as propaganda against the United States by the Nazis. That's so funny. I was like, look at fucking, look how fucking... Look at this fucking bitch. Look how fucking huge she is. This is bad. I don't know how you turn that as bad, or it's like, look how jacked this woman is. That's not sick. You know yeah. how you know how Joe Rogan would have had Mildred Burke on her pod on the podcast and be like, So you can like bench shit? And she's like, Yeah, and he'd be like, That's fucking crazy. By the way, you wanna know how I figured out how to end COVID, which is all we need Ooh. to do is get John Jones to sit down with Joe Rogan and be like but what if I do take the vaccine? And then I guarantee Joe Rogan's like, <laughs> wait a minute, what are you saying? And then he's just like, I, John Jones, the guy who's like, I could be a cage fighter, but I also could just be a guy who does boner pills. It's sort of both. I'm actually okay with the vaccine. And I guarantee Joe Rogan will be like, I've done a lot of hard thinking about it. And actually, yeah, because here's what I've been thinking. John and Jones is Rogan... a bit of a Billy Wolf himself, though, if you look at Oh, boy. Uh, but here's what I was thinking is Joe Rogan is not Mr. Tough Guy. He is who he just wanted to be an MMA fighter and has never been able to be an MMA fighter. And this is how weird fans of UFC and wrestling are. I think, we, I think it's weird if I think we, he could have been. But he just chose not to for whatever reason. He, so either he's way, he's, he's not. Old. He's not. And there is nothing worse in the world than wrestling fans or MMA fans. Basically, the nerd cultures that never really got to be mainstream, mm. when one of them gets famous, it's like, oh, watch the fuck out. He has a level of resentment that's so unnecessary, he's really going to take it out on the world. Look at how Colt Cabana, or not, pardon me, not yeah, how Colt, Colt Cabana, Cabana, no, yes. How uh, Freudian slip, how CM Punk okay. handles himself in the media or in the ring. CM Punk walks around with such a sense of entitlement that I get so irritated by him. because it's just like, you had CM who Punk is? prevented you from doing anything? You CM left Punk's a guy who sold one poetry book and is the manager at Starbucks, but just like sometimes. That's exactly who he is. Exactly. He's like, he works uh, one shift a week, but I'm he's a... still the manager because he knows how the business works so well. And he also always talks about how he's like, and I'm a published author. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's not impressive. Shut the fuck up. Published what the, the, is called the real Prodigals of Zion. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I figured it out. Spoiler alert: It's women and Jews, and they were like, "Women and Jews." <laughs> That's what it's called. Of it's course. called his book is called Spoiler El Alert. It's El women and yeah, Jews. yeah. El <laughs> Elders of Zion Two. Spoiler alert: It's women and yeah. Jews. <laughs> Elders of Zion Two. Uh, Elder of Zion Two. Also women too. Yeah, El yeah. The Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> the Electric Boogaloo. But hey, Mil Mildred Burke, I want to assume the. She gets out of wrestling essentially like primetime wrestling 33 years. And this is this is something that me and John can relate to is the being good at something. I mean, I can't relate to selling as many tickets as Jack Dempsey, certainly, but being very good at something and not being like directly recognized immediately and it taking no. a while. Like, think about this. 
Mildred Burke is a top draw in 1938 and is selling, like, obviously in Florida, selling as many tickets as Jack Dempsey. Because, I, I mean, it doesn't say this explicitly in the research. I'm sure it is. the It was, like, this woman can beat up men. Look at, watch her beat up men. Like, it's yeah. that. I it's mean, not it's, like it's, everyone in 1937 not... was like, maybe women are equal to men. And then they just. No, forgot. no, no. It was like, yo, you want, you know how you hate women? It's like, ah, uh, yeah. And it's like, you want to see a woman you hate beat up a guy you hate more? And you're like, is it, is it in a tent? Cause I'd like a, a breeze. And they're like, it is in a tent. You're like, this is fun. I guarantee it was like a, they hand out flyers that had Mildred more like Burke great. and then the dude like facing off and then the it didn't say their names it just said she overcooked his dinner and he was like this i got a seat <laughs> yeah he's like yeah and then she wanted, just bashed he wanted, their head yeah he <laughs> wanted he wanted meatloaf but she prepared prime rib oh, i got oh, i gotta, also, see, Billy I gotta Wolf, see how this man is so reasonable with this unreasonable woman i think the one thing you can say that he really does take though billy wolf would always try and pay shooters to hurt her and she would always beat them up I mean, it is so, so, so weird. Like, I always like wondered all, about like, those. Those she, There's so many times in the research where it's like, and then it was revealed that person pay. But here's my question for you. And Dylan, you better answer my fucking question. Okay. Um, how, When do you think Billy Wolf told the shooters, oh, that's my wife? Like, when he was like, and then you snap her neck. And he was like, how do you know this woman? Been married to her for five years. And he, oh, okay. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. When do I think he, I don't think he ever did. I think he just like. I don't know, man. I, if I was I don't know. up Billy with a Billy Wolf, Wolf impression, it'd be like, I love it. Uh, Hitler's it's uh, a lot of liberal. I, I assume it's a lot of smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Killer. Um, Just drool out of both sides. Oh, of yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> to say it's a rash is really just understating what it is. It's what's... Uh... Yeah. I wouldn't say that I... I'm trying to kill women. I'm only saying that I only feel like God when they're dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming he goes to diners and just, can I have a straw? Deep lick, put it back. Thank yeah, yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mildred, I'd like to introduce you to my uh, new protege. His name is uh, Gene Okerlund. And he's <laughs> eaten all of your underwear. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the carnival, which is what I call my penis because it has... Killed many children. Um, you can't oh. no sell what I'm doing, Billy. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I'll haunt your dreams. You. Yeah. Mildred. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Mildred Burke's Billy Wolf Revenge. For the rest of my life, Mildred, when you die, I will piss on your grave. Won't always be in the town, so I'll be paying different people to drop little bits of my piss from a jar. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up that, like, once again, if you're, it's... If you're going to be abusive, imagine being known as an ab a guy abusive to your wife in the 30s. That's such a very interesting point. That's yeah. like, what, like what people, the reason why, obviously, y y Hitler is such a thing is because in the 1930s in the United States, people were like, well, this guy's racist. We got to do something about this. Anyway, I've seen black people in print. But I always boo the page they're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never read the words because I assume that that would make me crazy. Oh, hot eyes. Yeah, hot yeah, eyes, yeah. My eyes. Mm. Um. Uh. Why is your husband qu qu uh, uh, crying? Quack, quack. Three days. Three days ago, he accidentally said good morning to a Polish woman. He's thinking about suicide, and I think he's right. He uh, tried. Dylan. He uh. He went in to explain to a priest uh, to apologize to the priest and get repentance, but the priest said, "No, you've talked yeah. to a Polish. We cannot forgive that." Yeah. The the priest then burned the church to the ground. <laughs> if someone said hello to a Polish man as if they're an equal, Wait. this cannot be a hallowed hall of God no, no, anymore. No, okay. I thought it would have been fine if it was a Polish man, but a Polish woman. She has a type of fleas that means we'll all soon be Jews. Go home and kill your children. Yeah, just imagine this. I'll do. All right, you be the you be the guy, uh, the guy, and I'll be the uh, priest who gets hello, the confession. Hello, I, I spoke to a Polish woman today. I said hello, good morning, and then immediately started throwing up. Gun, mouth, blam! <laughs> priest kills himself. <laughs> blam! Not even the sweet taste of a kid's dick can rinse this out of my head. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, good I, and hello. No context for the review. Good luck with this episode. I assume it is your magnum opus <laughs> yeah exactly that's also all priests in case 
they uh, get uh, a sin repented to them that it's really gross. They have tiny tan guns that they can put in their mouths. Because <laughs> they're like a kid's ween. Priests are pedophiles. So, John, <laughs> what's your favorite part of Mildred Burke's career? I would hope life. that towards the end of her life that she had one moment of happiness. Worst part yeah. of the rest of her career, every moment before that moment of happiness was a unyielding walk through hell while you're wet and hot. I think that my favorite part is probably her divorce of Billy Wolf, and probably the worst part is her, the thing that she loved. You know what the thing is? You know what the probably the, the good thing about Mildred Burke is? Even though she got what she wanted, it was like a genie's curse. Like, here's what you get, what you want, but you have to fucking deal with the worst person you'll ever meet, anyone yeah. will ever meet in their life. But <laughs> she still was involved in wrestling. Um for a long time after that and still ran a training center even though she was blackballed seemingly because the nwa viewed women's wrestling as a sideshow and they didn't want to work with billy wolf and then rather than she's like well you can just work with me and they were like no but she paved the way for uh fabulous mula to also be a crazy abuser and oh may yeah young, and may young to be um the dave Chappelle of women's wrestling where you're like wow you're really good at this like i don't believe not one of them bitches you're like oh, okay may all right well yeah, maybe yeah, we'll just like, stick oh, you to the ring <laughs> no talking just say hello yeah <laughs> that was a really good match may there's two genders okay stop it may yeah yeah, yeah. uh may uh thank you so much for being entered into the hall of fame more like hall of shame i saw two jews on the stage someone get me a gun <laughs> <laughs> But then also May Young finishing a cigarette in her nineties going give it to in me. In her vagina. Bubba. She's smoking she's smoking into it. her vagina. She's yeah. just like the Mark cigar Henry hand mouth segment mouth. was yeah. not that was not written. That was why did that she was her right hand. Yeah, that just happens. Yeah. Uh when you bo when you make sure to charbroil all your meat in a aluminum foil <laughs> tin that you've had from the fifties, your cunt gets fucked up. You know how Joe Rogan does TRT to maintain a man well into his 60s? Well, I do that with estrogen, so I get my period, but there's no fucking what telling what comes yeah. out of there. I, I, and... still get my, I still get my period, but I live old school, so I haven't been given permission to, co to, get, co to get color out of my cunt, so it's just <laughs> bits of flesh. <laughs> they won't let me do the hardcore title. I fucking take all these pills and my period and do color. Yeah, fucking yeah, motherfuckers. Fuck you. Yeah, Shane doesn't want to do color, so I'm just going to get my rag yeah. and rub it on his head. Hey, here's something you don't know about me. I'm actually Vince McMahon's mom because I beat up his dad. That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mildred Burke has, is, a, is the mom of a lot of men then. Good for her. Anyway, yeah. that ended. I mean, every time we do an episode about this, we just go, hey, we shouldn't talk like this, which <laughs> I think gets in our head and goes, oh, let's be a caricature of what people... Um, Oh, <sighs> these... Uh, these losers are doing an episode about a storied women's wrestler. I'm sure it's just going to be like two losers in a locker room. No, actually, it won't be. It'll be like two adults force those losers out of a locker room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be, uh, it, first of all, it will be two losers who were never allowed in a locker room doing an impression of what mm. they thought happened in there. So it's actually much sadder. I'll ha uh, sir, I'll have you know that your insults are music to us because we are way weirder than you could even imagine. So Exactly. I hope you know oh, something about Oh, you insult about us. me? Well, I have an answer for that, sir. In song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think this is pretty obvious. The best thing about Mildred Burke is she, is that she died uh, and, you know what the and up she thing forgave that, that good man, Billy Wolf. That's right. That's you heard it. Dylan good. not say it. The worst part about uh, Mildred Burke, she disrespected that fine and good man, Billy Wolf. That's Best good. thing about her, she died knowing what she did. My name is Dylan exactly. Gott. That's Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N, double up that T on the Gott. When you're following me on Twitter, go ahead, it's Dylan, with your point. It's just because it's kind of like a lot of the things Jackie Robinson did in Major League Baseball. But if after Jackie Robinson retired, everyone at Major League Baseball is like, well, we're never doing that again. Yeah, exactly. That would be Yeah, it would be like if the, after uh, Jackie Robinson walked onto the field, in Montreal or New York, wherever he did it, because he kind of did it twice. Brooklyn. They don't count. Yeah, it was they? Well, they don't count. They don't the count Montreal because they're no, like because it was French. Canada. It was Canada. Fuck you. Like that. Yeah, uh, his dad wasn't owned by any Canadians. Is what the Brit. That's is so what, fucked up. But yes, that's it's so thing. fucked up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. They're like the Canadians were like, we don't like that he's on the field, but we just don't have a reason. And then yeah. like, and then in America, it was like, 
when in reality it's like, well, no one's here. No one's here to boo it. Yeah. It just has to exactly. get along with the other players. <laughs> yeah, he just has to get along with the other American players who are not happy he's there. Yeah, not happy. And it would all. be like if he got back to the dugout, the manager had his hands on his uh, hips and be like, well, I hope you had fun out there because you're now about to be shot. And it's like, what? Bam! And we're like, yeah, there. We tried it. It was very bad because Jackie Robinson was immediately murdered. Well, this became longer, but anyway, one of my favorite, I'm reading this book about the history of the NFL right now, and one of my favorite quotes ever was Jim Brown saying, so he, when he comes in the league, he was like, yeah, Jackie Robinson had to like swallow a lot of the hate because he knew he, if he responded, it would um, reinforce all the negative stereotypes they had about our people. Um, but I didn't have to do that. So it was like, it was like every time someone said something racist, which is a lot of like a lot of Jim ground clips are him running towards the end zone. Of then he sees someone I... runs across, kills them and then runs to the yeah. end zone. It's like, Jim oh, that's Brown why that happens. Is... You want to know why Jim Brown is one of the sweetest, nicest broadcasters on Fox? He's still on Fox uh, Sport, uh, Fox Football on Sundays. He's still the. I don't think of... so. Jim Brown is so old now. Uh, last yeah, time I saw Jim Brown, so they old. brought him out on a. On they brought him out slowly. But for twenty were still years, like, that's Jim Brown, man. That's for twenty best. years, he was the charming, nice man on Football on Sundays on Fox. Like Terry Bradshaw, clearly just doing battle with CTE and Howie Long, and then they'd throw to Jim Jerry Brown. Bradshaw just, openly, publicly is pro-vaccine, which shocked me to no end. So yeah. much. Oh, my God. So much. By the way, most of the NFL is very like, yeah, we need to do something about this vaccine. Also, I didn't realize how many of like the, the legends were very pro-Colin Kaepernick, and apparently the league mm -hmm. was like, you can have your opinion, but could you just do it quietly? And they, like, they were like, but I could, Terry, I could but, go on a whole thing about the NFL and their history with the military, but let's just say this. The NFL and the military been like this forever. And ever. Like, forever. Um, like, the rise and... of the military-industrial complex, and, like, the like basically baseball was never, like, joined the military, and the NFL, as soon as the military, like, after World War II, was just kept on. Like, it's like this. Yeah. It's crazy. But anyway, Jim continue. Brown was so funny because you Jim Brown was, like, this storied – maniac football player and then it would be like jim what do you think and he, and he would be like i'll tell you what i like sundays because that's when my wife she makes peach cobbler for after <laughs> dinner and everyone's just like jim brown so smart and like i had no idea who jim brown was but just the way that the other commentators viewed him you're always like what did jim brown do 20 years ago that made terry bradshaw so nervous to be around him like it just felt like jim brown's exactly keep in mind this about it, jim brown i think jim brown's like this michael jordan for sure was like this i'm at a loss for any other athletes but jim brown was so good at football they were like hey, you could probably act like that's how yeah. good you are with something where it's like yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah these yeah. two oh, things dude. are connected but like you're fucking you're fucking so sick the following like, people that are like this are weird. It's Jim Brown. Mm -hmm. It's Michael Jordan. It's weirdly, weirdly. They, they tried thought Wayne Gretzky. That did not go well. They did. They tried Wayne Gretzky. Maybe the worst Saturday Night Live they, of all time. They weirdly thought Dan Marino for a minute. Ooh. Dan, well, Dan Marino. Marino's got that sweet, sweet skin. He. Oh my God! And those isotoners. Um. But the one that they, uh, oh my God, oh my God, his name just fell right out of my head. The one that always will surprise, why I always find it interesting is The Rock is the best example of that is The Rock is just good at everything. Well, The Rock's just got a million dollars tomorrow. No, but if you think about it, The Rock is not great at anything. The Rock is good at oh, everything. Oh, I hear him sing every day. Will you listen to the Moana soundtrack? I mean, I don't even know what that means, but that's insane. He was in a movie called, a Disney movie called Moana. And he played a guy who was jacked. Even as a cartoon, he's so yoked that of he has course. to play a guy who's jacked. And um, he's but this well. is the like Jim Brown strikes me as someone who's like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, where it's just like he's just very he, like he like Jim Brown was very good at football, so everyone assumes he's good at everything. He's probably fine. He's good at commentating on football and in, and scaring Howie Long. Uh, and then, but The Rock is just good at everything. That's the and there's there's like 20 people in of human history that are also. Like that. I think you're thinking of James Brown. Jim Brown. No, I'm thinking of Jim Brown. James Brown is on the Fox panel. Are there two? Day. They're telling me that there's two of them, and they didn't distinct the second guy. James Brown is a broad. Didn't change Jim his Brown. name. That's not the same. I have literally lived my whole life also, assuming James that's the Brown. same flower. Jeez, this is. I don't crazy. know anything about football, but that's the thing. I. What do you mean it's not the same guy? Also, James Brown is way more famous than Jim Brown. There's and the the I okay. I'm looking James this up. Brown. I'm so confused. James Brown 
the king of soul, the hardest working man in show business, Jim Brown, fullback oh, for the Cleveland I totally, Browns. Yeah, I totally have confused Who, who two retired at 29, yep. murdered everyone he played against, and James Brown, the host of Fox NFL Sunday. I 100% confused both the of these people. with the most friendly I, face in the history of broadcast. I thought James a Brown, the sportscaster. Just cheeks, warm eyes, and a mouth. I thought that guy had played football this whole time. I didn't realize he, he was just a journalist. Has, just he's not as good as Jim Brown because no one is. No, he not. He literally just he was. He tried out That's for the Atlanta funny. Hawks. He tried out for the Atlanta Hawks. Was not good enough. Then just started doing commentary for the NBA. Weirdly, man. Do you know how fucking cool you have to be to try out for a team, get rejected, and then they're like, "But you want to call the games?" And he's like, "Yeah." Let me tell you this about Jim Brown. I did not know. I just knew this this gentleman, this J, this James Brown. James Brown. Also, I he, not even Jim. You just thought he went formal for the broadcast. Man, that's that's funny. what I did. I did. This is a hundred percent true. <laughs> I, I just I thought I was like you keep going. I guess he was Jim when he played. James when he was on the fucking. Uh, uh, what you call it? Also, I wanted all. I, oh my god! I thought he played in the CFL, and I was very excited. Um, CFL had as much money as the NFL in the 50s, though. That's insane. Also, uh, the movies that uh, Jim Brown were in, I think this is my favorite one. Dirty Dozen. Cr Crack House, Killing American Style, Twisted Justice, Hammer Slammer and Slade, The Divine Enforcer, Original Gangsters. Those are the movies he was in between 1989 and 1992. He's a bad man. I still stand by what I said, and I um, Good. I feel fine. Also, <laughs> James Brown, the broadcaster, you're a dick because you literally are like, wait, who's named James Brown in the industries? They're like, the well, there is, there's the King of Soul. And then the king of football, and they are both named James Brown. And who are you? You're like, I am not a good basketball player, but I will also be using their names. That's why I was so confused. And then 100%, I was just... he was like, is that fucking James Brown? And people want to be like, James, and and people tuned in like, James Brown is going to host something, or it's just James I guarantee Brown people about, like, still were like, uh, welcome to that... the, welcome to the NBA on NBC. My dick still smells like fish because I fucked a girl. Anyway, I'm James Brown. First things first, no one gets to talk. Here's a concert. Like, that's what they thought. I, and then it was just a nice I would man. Pay, I would pay thousands of dollars for one full year. One full uh, year. All James Browns have to be alive. That's Jim Brown, James Brown soul, James <laughs> Brown, James Brown commentator. Mm. Every day they have to switch lives for one year. And I want that documented. And it would be the best. Because Jim they are life right now probably pretty easy. James Jim Brown, Brown, James Brown hosting the NFL on Fox would be bad because Jim, there's no way James Brown wouldn't just start singing, or smart doing drugs. Like first of all, James Brown's soul very. He would just dead. he would just keep going. Get it, get it, get it, the chorus. And then yeah, Howie yeah. Long is like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, ah, "We're gonna hit it and quit." And he's like, yeah, "What?" Exactly. He's yeah, like, yeah. "Hit it and quit." Because you ever yeah. seen? Have you ever seen James Brown? I mean, the, CNN, the, CNN, the CNN interview where he's wearing the yellow glasses and he's talking about how he shot up a sheriff's, a, like he got under a giant yeah, well. he's just like, he doesn't live on this planet. He's like, he's well, like you have rules. I'm James Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Hit ya! <laughs> like, that's the thing. is, It'd be yeah. like, and James Brown, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, Bills versus Patriots tonight. Uh, well, it is, uh, oh, you got to live it up. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be so, it would be just like, what do you think is going to happen? Right. Living James in America? Brown, Bam. Yeah, he only talks in uh, It's a Man's World, Living in America, Popcorn, number five. Oh, yeah, and uh, what was the – yeah, it's like if, you're, if Chuck Berry and Keith Richards playing guitar and Keith Richards trying to play along, like play rhythm for Chuck Berry, and Chuck Berry just goes, stop, you're terrible at this. And that was after – that's like the 70s. It's yeah, like this he's, was, he's – definitively, I, I, he's Keith Richards in the Rolling Stones, okay. and Chuck Berry's like, your shit. Get the uh, fuck out of, of all, my face. Dylan, you can talk all about sports references and I'll make big errors. But do not walk into rock and roll trivia and think that you have the big dick. Because I got the big dick. It was the rock and roll circus concert, which was set up by Keith Richards to remind everyone how good Chuck why Berry Chuck Berry is good. And Chuck Berry was such an asshole. First of all, Chuck it. Berry demanded to be paid. Showed up and was like, <laughs> where is my money? And they were Where's like, where's my what? money? Where's my piss? Where's my money? Uh, and this is where they, it's the beginning of everyone learning about Chuck Berry's rules to perform with Chuck Berry. Here's some of the rules. I do not rehearse with the band. They should just know my songs. I'm Chuck Berry. I show up with my guitar and just plug it in, and I am paid at the airport. And they were like, what? Like, 
This is what I like about Chuck Berry, and I'm going to make a weird thing and try and make it about wrestling again, then we'll get off of here. Oh, Chuck by the way, what Dylan likes is that he uh, videotaped all those women pissing in that restaurant he owned. That's what Dylan liked. Restra- it restaurant, restaurant or his house? I thought it was, thought his, it was restaurant. his house. No, it was a restaurant. I you thought know it was what? Let's do an episode on Chuck Berry. <laughs> Why not? Who cares? Can we do a Patreon episode on Chuck Berry? He should have been a wrestler. <laughs> I want to do a, Lemma, a Patreon episode on Lemmy because him forgetting, getting so drunk that he forgets the words to Triple H's theme song at WrestleMania is one of the best things I've ever seen. Here's the thing that I want to point out. I don't even think he was that drunk. I just think he didn't remember he wrote the song. He's just like, wait, what? Like, if you Lemmy... like to gamble, everyone be friends. Win yeah. some, I'm friends. Yeah, game. I'm a Lemmy. game. Let's go to the game. Okay. Hey. Yeah. It's, it's like... all about the game. I'm a game. Games I like are the following. Guess who? Yeah. I'm a game. Let's go to the game. I don't care. But um, anyway, uh, what was I talking about? What we're talking about? Oh, make this about wrestling. Chuck Berry is a lot like uh, Dusty Rhodes, where Dusty Rhodes still was Dusty Rhodes towards the end of his life. Was like, I'm a fucking, like I'm the I'm a fucking star, and treat me like a goddamn star. Which is why he was not allowed on television because he was like, oh, I'm just gonna go off script and like make this a better yeah. segment. And they were like, no, you don't do that because now, you know, our top performers have egg on their face. Like him just moving Stephanie out of the way. So subtle and so. Bear in good. mind, if Stephanie had just dealt like that, dealt with that like an adult, AEW doesn't exist. I mean, AEW doesn't exist if, I mean, there's a but like, but the thing, the roll, the ball downhill that makes AEW exist is like Rob Van Dam getting over during the um, invasion angle and them being like, no, nah, yeah, like it seems like such a small thing, but that was the first time it was like, oh, you want this? Yeah, but he's not six three. Sorry, um, well, like, we I, have, I, have, I have to leave. I am now officially late for something because of oh, this show. I'm late for something. Anyway, Goodbye. Uh, get John on Twitter and Instagram, at the John Hastings. Wrestler Review, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, at Dylan Gott, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be doing a Patreon episode with a poll. If you're a patron, please vote on that. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff, but who cares? Thanks very much for your time and for us talking in circles. And I think, I think in total, we talked about Mildred Burke for 40 minutes in this. I'm going to say, I think that's pretty impressive. We talked about Mildred. We talked about Mildred Burke for 40 minutes and somehow Jim Brown and James Brown and the other James Brown. I'm still, I I still maintain I'm right that that's not fair of the third James Brown. The third James Brown should have changed. I'm, I'm making myself late to make this point. Fuck you. Change your name third james if you're the third which james brown are you i'm not the two you're thinking of you're a cunt change your name wow yeah you know what? Did- go ahead if you are a person of color out there you all have to have different names for john no Hastings, okay? that's not what i'm saying what <laughs> i'm saying is if you're a media personality <laughs> in the same sport Fred it would Adams, be like yeah, exactly both people of color it Even would if be one like, of them is a, uh, a let's Puerto go, Rican man let's and one go of them to the Asian, w- he's confused no, now. No, no, let's he go to the w- – shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> let's go to the WWE okay. warm-up show hosted by Steve Austin, not that one, and du- Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There are two Steve James- Austins. Did you, could you tell those apart? No, I cannot tell them apart. I go only by that? names. I didn't. I don't follow football, and I didn't know who – I assumed there would – I assumed – that they would take legendary so football happy. player Jim so Brown right now. and make him the commentator. Instead, they were like, no, let's get a different guy also confusingly the named James The worst thing Brown. is we can't clip this for social media because it's so long. Of course you can't, but everyone come. And by the way, <laughs> this, is, this is why it's also a perfect internet moment is because both of us think we're right and there is nothing to do to convince us otherwise. I am. I mean, clearly you shouldn't change your name based on one guy's preference, but yes, you should. Really... If it's your, it, it's like, wow, I completely agree with you. If you're going into the same industry where that person's is already your version of a Dave legend and famous. Rights? No, this is not my send, version of that. 10 bits. Like, listen, you know, James Brown and James Brown and people are like, what change their names? And people are like, what are you talking about? I mean, change I'm not their names. I, I'm already. So, I mean, I shouldn't say this and you may have to edit it out. If I hear one more person say, well, you got to pick a side in the Dave Chappelle. Here's where I pick. I pick with I'm the funny comedians and Dave Chappelle has been funny in 10 fucking years and he sucks. And if everyone's like, he's so good. When? He hasn't been good since they they found weapons of mass destruction, not in Iraq, was the last time Dave Chappelle was funny. Shut the fuck up. 
I think he, some of his shit's good, but also he, whenever a comedian has a huge body change, like watch uh, the fuck out. Yeah, man. By like, the way, most of the reason Jack, why I like, don't think Dave Chappelle is good anymore is because of the amount God. of people have just gone, he's super good, and I have to be like, he's not always that good. And then they go, <laughs> shut Dude, the fuck so up. So we'll end on this story. But um, now it was for sure this is a sour grape story. By the way, uh, Dylan and I are t- not talking about Dave Chappelle, the comedian. We're talking about Dave Chappelle, the comedy promoter. Oh, by the way. Who Dave, refused to also change his name. Did Dave LaChapelle change his name? He was a, yes, that's also awesome confusing to me. That is confusing okay. to me as well. He should he should be like, I'm not as famous as Dave Chappelle, the comedian. I'll be Dave La Chap. There. Easy. La resistance. Changed. David La Resistance. How so good would that be? By a guy who Dave Chappelle did admittedly m- murder because they what they did was they had a um they had a what do you call that? Roast battle. And Dave Chappelle showed up hammered and just started being one of the judges. Yeah. And uh, they did like an ironic roast battle and people were not enjoying it. And Dave Chappelle was basically like drunk being like, you guys aren't funny. Go fucking suck an ass. And then they were like, and they said, oh, so, and then one guy said, oh, sorry. Why don't you go? Um, basically went, why don't you go freak out and leave the industry again? But in better words than that. And yeah, yeah. Went, I was at Ooh. I was at the festival. Oh, yeah. Where and this then he place. went, and then he <laughs> went. I'm funnier than you in sign language, and just started doing this, and then people laughed, which is whatever. Anyway, but then they watched the rest of the show from back, and Dave Chappelle was just looking at a picture of himself on Muscle and Fitness the whole show, on his phone. He was just looking at a picture of himself on the cover of Muscle and Fitness. I didn't know that part. That's one of the craziest. And ever since I heard that, I heard that like seven, eight years ago. Everything he's done since then, I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. Because only a guy like that. Oh my god, that makes... only a guy who like that who's like his whole life he's been like, I'm funny and smart. Now that I'm jacked, I'm perfect. And then when someone doesn't agree with him, that's when he goes, No, I am right, and here's why. And it's like the first couple specials he had were great. And then he did the trans thing, and people were like, he can't joke about that. And ever since he's done that joke, more and more of his specials have involved the trans th- stuff because he he just can't leave a sleeping dog lie. First like of all, I, to, I, if I you could, make I, a point and beat him, he re-enters the room and says why he's right, and then you beat that point again, and then he re-enters the room like 10 minutes later when he thinks he has another good point. Ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Gott is – that is one of the most perfectly insightful clips of Dave Chappelle, and I completely agree with everything Dave, uh, Dylan is saying. And I come back to this is – Dave Gott. And I just, I just want to – yeah, Dylan – Dylan is now – guess who Jim Brown is now? And Dylan? Also, Ashley Larry was mean to one of our friends. I didn't know about that part, but I like it. Uh, I like that someone – I hope that that person – Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you, I'm gonna who I'm gonna edit this Patreon. heavily for the main feed because it's gone all over the place. But the patrons are getting the whole fucking thing, and they can end with J- Dylan is now Jim Brown. Dylan is the new Jim Brown. That point about oh, Dave Chappelle was so good. You're the new da- Jim Brown, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week, and we hope you're all the new Jim Brown. I now oh, have to break way, a lot of Bastion speeding Booger, balls. Big change, Bastion Booger. Big change in seriousness of episode. Bastion yeah, Booger. yeah, yeah. I I am now because of the Jim Brown Dave Chappelle rant debate. I now be I now may be late for a gig in the desert. I do Ooh. not care. I do not care. <laughs> this was worth it Next for no week, other reason. We're reviewing Dylan's a guy who looks more Dave like Chappelle, my dad than my dad. Ladies does. and gentlemen, he really does. I know only the Patreons are getting this. Dylan has literally just summed up and perfectly explained Dave Chappelle as a human being and a performer to me and makes the world make sense again. Yeah. And I don't like that. Dylan has insight. He's now a father. This is why you should eat the insight. New podcast. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, tune in next week for our new podcast, Incels with Insight. I told my wife this will take 15 minutes. It's taken 43 now. I love you. I'm going to play with my child in the snow.